Two of the biggest names in fighting games, Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, both got a sequel in 2023, and both of them had a massive impact on the fighting game community in general, as both games decided to innovate and introduce new mechanics to their franchise, to their series, where some of the new implements upset some of the community, and others made them very happy. But what are the major differences between Street Fighter 6 and Mortal Kombat 1 when it comes to the gameplay, the mechanics, accessibility, and the roster? Today we're going over all that and answering those questions. So without further ado, Let's get into it. Take it one step at a time. Subscribe here for more fighting game content, my dudes, because we have new videos Monday and Friday, and we stream at least twice a week. And as we go over the comparisons of these two heavyweights, let me know down below which game do you prefer? Because though there are major differences, of course, a lot of this is opinion-based, so let me know yours down below. The first thing I want to note about the differences between Street Fighter VI and Mortal Kombat 1 is the type of gameplay. They're both 2D fighters, yes, but they play very differently. I think you can enjoy both for sure because they're so different, but I can see why you might enjoy one over the other. Street Fighter 6 is very methodical. You're playing a ton of neutral, ton of footsies. You're not doing 30, 40 hit combos. You do play aggressive, but you also play a lot of defensive here because Street Fighter gives you a lot of defensive options, which we'll go over later, but a quick rundown is drive parry, drive impact. You have drive rush to be more aggressive that way. You have a ton of options in both categories of defense and offense. So a lot of time you don't mind playing pretty defensively and then punishing your opponent accordingly. And though Mortal Kombat does have a little bit of neutral and footsies, yes, most fighting games do. Mortal Kombat is pretty focused on the aggressive side. Your main focus of the fights is trying to throw out those 50-50 mixes and in doing so getting the longest combo you possibly can off to do the most damage. And though you could argue, well, one step, that's the point of a fighting game is do the most damage, win the fight. Yes, but there is a difference when it comes to gameplay style, even in fighting games, especially comparing Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Again, Mortal Kombat being a bit more aggressive and Street Fighter playing on both sides, aggressive and defensive, just with the mechanics and style they brought to their game. Just a difference you should know about. Street Fighter 6 also has a very good archetype system for their characters. And what I mean by that, you can see here, we have types here. We got power, speed, power, tricky, speed, power, tricky. Not only do we have types of characters we also have archetypes meaning characters like dj blanca e honda and even chun li are charged characters meaning a lot of their moves have to be charged before they can be used and their gameplay kind of focuses around that we got characters like ken ryu and even luke that are more or less your standard shoto type of character where they're pretty well rounded you know they have a pretty good projectile they got good mid range close range they have a good dp they're just well rounded then you have massive heavy hitters like marissa that are more focused on power and going through your opponent's hits. You got zoners like JP, Guile, and you have grapplers like Manon and Zangief, where they have fun and good combos, but their gameplay focuses around their grappling moves. So Street Fighter 6 has done a very good job about building archetypes and really making those characters stand out in those archetypes, and you really feel the archetype in the character. Mortal Kombat does have archetypes to a good point, but also kind of not really. It's more or less characters have their own kit, which make them stand out, yes, but they're all just going for combos or going for damage again i know some characters do like rain is a really good set play character setting traps going for the good mix-ups characters like shang Tsung, quan chi and Liu kang could definitely be considered zoners in the game and reiko does have a command grab so people do call him a grappler which i guess you could see but garris also has a command grab and no one calls him a grappler so they do have archetypes to a point like i said but they're not as prominent as they were let's say in street fighter and one of the newest biggest mechanics that street fighter 6 is introduced to their newest installment is of course the drive system we have those six bars up top and those bars can be used for a multitude of things this is where the drive parry comes into play you can do perfect parries to take your turn back you have drive impact that if you punish your opponent well now you get a free combo you have drive rush to get in your opponent's face you can drive rush cancel you have special moves like your dp and you can enhance that dp using those bars so yeah, those six bars are used for all of that. With having bars like that, a cool mechanic is you do not take chip damage if you have those bars. But as soon as our opponent runs out of bars like this, they are now burnt out, so they will take chip damage. So it's just a really cool mechanic introduced that allows for multiple different uses, in-game health mechanics, and so much more. And while Street Fighter has the new drive system with their bars, Mortal Kombat has stuck to their three bar system. And we have our special moves like always, and we can use those bars to enhance our special moves and get your properties, whether it be combo extension, more damage, whatever it is. Some offer different utility, yes. And that's gonna be like 90% of the usage for your bars is enhancing special moves. But Mortal Kombat did bring back the breaker system, allowing you to break out of a combo using all three of your bars. 
And of course you can imagine that comes really in clutch sometimes, really allowing for that comeback, getting your opponent off you, resetting that space during the fight. It's really good, but it's also really expensive. And we have our flawless block and our up block mechanics in the game, but with the bars, that's really about it. We're not doing crazy parries, reversals with our drive system, anything like that. That's the main usage for the bars in Mortal Kombat. Now with those bars though, we also have our cameo bars up top. And cameos, I think, really make Mortal Kombat stand out. Mortal Kombat 1 will go down in history as the Mortal Kombat with the cameo system, especially if they don't do it for the next Mortal Kombat game. It's the Mortal Kombat that allows you to kind of play two characters. You can play Raiden, Sub-Zero, whoever, with a cameo. So in this case, I can play Raiden with Serena. I can play Raiden with Kano. And it really does mix up your gameplay. And it's really cool to have a one certain main, but also have three or four different main cameos to change up the fight, change up the pace. And a lot of the cameos don't offer just combo extension or just more damage. They offer some utility. Kano offers a restand. Scorpion offers a full screen armor to reset move. Kung Lao and Motaro offer teleports for mobility. You get the idea. A lot of cameras offer different utility compared to just damage. And that can really change the pace of the fight and sometimes even the turnout. Now with that being said, we have our three super bars down there and our two cameo bars. Yes, I know some cameo moves take the full bar. Most take a half. So we have four to five bars technically. So if we do a combo like this, that's one cameo bar there. We do our combo. We enhance a move here. Technically, that's two bars because we use one of our own bars and one cameo bar. And you could actually enhance a second move and use a cameo a second time. So one combo could take four bars or all your bars. Depends on how you want to spend your resources. And I think the biggest thing that Street Fighter introduced into their new installment, Street Fighter 6, is of course the modern controls. We all know the classic controls. We got light, medium, heavy punch, light, medium, heavy kick. We do our specials, down, forward, kick. We have our supers that usually, you know, down, forward, down, forward, or medium, kick, or whatever. But in order to bring bring in a new beginning audience. They introduce modern controls, which in my opinion is an amazing way to bring in new players that might be a bit intimidated by the classic setup. I did a whole video on modern controls and explained them here, but for a quick rundown, you only have three buttons. You got light, medium, heavy attack, and you have one button specials, back special, forward special, down special, kind of like Smash Bros. You have one button supers. Now you might think, well, why is everybody not using these inputs? Well, it's because modern does have a drawback and that is doing 20% less damage on your special specials and your supers. And you don't get the character's full kit because let's say your heavy button is the character's heavy punch. Well, now you can't do their heavy kick like you could if you were to use classic controls. So a couple of drawbacks. I've seen players that use modern controls to get into the game and then never stop. I've seen characters use modern controls to get into the game and then switch over later to classic controls. It's just a great innovative way to bring in a new audience, keep them here, give them a good time and really expand their player base. Personally, I'm a big advocate for modern controls. You're gonna hear a lot of trolls online say, no, modern controls is for babies. As a video game, game standpoint, this is awesome. And if you're scared of using classic controls, I recommend coming into Street Fighter, using modern, getting used to the game, and deciding do you want to stick with modern or switch to classic? It's all up to you. Now, Street Fighter 6 offers modern controls because they've always had their classic controls, which can be quite intimidating to some players because that is six attacks. You know, light, medium, heavy punch, light, medium, heavy kick. But in Mortal Kombat's case, they don't have modern controls, and I think it's because they don't really need it. They have four attacks, and that's about it. They have the cameos, yes, and throws, but when it comes to attack wise, they have two thirds of what Street Fighter 6 normally has. So Mortal Kombat again doesn't have modern controls, but I don't think they need it. Another big difference on the two games here is how they do their super move. In Street Fighter, we have three different super moves. You see down there in the bottom left corner, we have a super meter that builds up throughout the game and does not reset per round, but you have three supers, one, two, and three, and they all do different things. And of course, your first super is not as powerful as your third super, but they have different properties. Like for an example, Manon's first super, <laughs> is a low hitting attack that does not have invincibility on startup. However, her second one does, and it's a good anti-air as well. And then the third super is actually command grab, and the super threes do more damage if you're on critical health. Now with every character having three different supers, a lot of them do damage, yes, but a lot of them have different properties. I can't go over all the super differences, but to give you a quick example, Jury's Super Art 2 here, at first glance, it doesn't really do anything. You're like, what, what, what the frick's going on? Well, you see there in the bottom of the corner, our bar is being drained, and that's because this super is actually an install super. Meaning we have certain normals, like our heavy attacks here, that can't go into other heavy attacks, but our super art two here allows us to link normals into other normals 
that normally wouldn't be linkable. And you can imagine the combo potential with that. And that's just one example. There are many characters that have an install super like that with different properties. Now, when it comes to supers, Mortal Kombat has gone back to their fatal blow system, which allows you to have a super move that does really good damage as long as you are below that 30% health mark. And that's the big note is you can only use it when you're below that health percentage. So you can't use any kind of super if you're quote unquote winning the match. You have to be below that percentage to actually have access to that fatal blow slash super. And it's really cool because you can use it in combos. Yes. We have a cool animation and both of our cameo and ourselves do damage. But that's the big note is the fatal blows in Mortal Kombat are only there for extra damage. They offer no utility. There's no levels to the fatal blows. It's just a single super, which is cool, but you can go the entire round with never using it, especially if you're winning the match. You don't have any extra super options though. And they all do the same. They're all just a cool animation with your cameo and yourself. And that's really about it. Not that that's a bad thing, but something to take note of compared to Street Fighter that has three different supers per character and they all offer different utility and or damage. Another way that Mortal Kombat stands out from these other games like Street Fighter is Street Fighter uses blocking like most other fighting games. They just have back and down back to block lows because most fighting games have overheads and lows and so on. So you gotta decide how do I block these, right? But most fighting games use back to block and then down back to block, no actual physical block button, which can really make it or break it for some players if you hate having a block button. Compared to just back blocking or down back block and Mortal Kombat has a block button. So though you might be used to it like I was for a very long time, having that block button is actually a bit weird. Not bad, just a bit different because now you have to manage your buttons with your, you know, your attacks, your grabs, but now you have to have a block button, which means if your opponent is blocking, you cannot cross them up. Meaning if they were holding back and I went this way and hit them, that would be a cross up. Whereas if you're just holding block, cross ups don't really exist in Mortal Kombat for that reason, which can frustrate some players. Also what that means, I can't attack while blocking like this. Like even my back one, back two, back three, I can't do attacks while blocking because I'm holding the block button. So you have to get in the habit of letting go of block and then doing an attack. Whereas in other fighting games like Street Fighter, when you're holding back to block and you do back attack, though you're technically blocking in that moment, you're still gonna do that back attack. You can kind of imagine that potential and the issues that it might cause having that block button. Again, not that it's bad, just a bit different. Street Fighter 6 is also a very grounded game I found. Like you're doing combos here on the ground and you go in the air a little bit, but you're not doing crazy aerial combos. Again, it's very grounded, very footsies, very neutral. Street Fighter is very grounded. Mortal Kombat is pretty aerial. We have dedicated aerial combos. And I'm not joking. In our moveset, we have aerial attacks. We have legitimate combos we do only in the air. Some of these pop up our opponent back up on the ground to continue their ground combo. Some go into aerial specials. Some just do really good damage. Then we have cameos like Sonya that allow for air combo extension like this. So right off the bat, most of that combo was just done in the air. And not that it's a major difference, it's just something to talk about comparing the differences between the grounded aerial feelings of both games. Also a small thing that people don't consider when comparing the games that I really do is how you escape grabs. In Street Fighter 6, we do have forward throw and we got back throw. How do you escape the throw if you read your opponent's gonna grab you? No other crazy inputs are needed. You just gotta grab them right back and that stops their throw. Escaping grabs in Street Fighter 6 is just grabbing your opponent right back and that's half the case in Mortal Kombat. In Mortal Kombat, we have forward throws, which are our cameo throws actually, and our back throws, which is our throw. And to escape those throws, you don't just grab your opponent right back. You have to press certain buttons. So if our opponent is gonna forward grab us, we have to press one or two to escape that grab. And then their back grab is three or four. And so not only do you not grab your opponent right back to escape their grab, you're guessing, do I press one or two? Or do I press three or four? Depending on me guessing, are they gonna do their forward throw or their back throw? And that can also be quite frustrating, especially if you call it, meaning, oh, my opponent's gonna grab me, I'm gonna escape this, but you guess the wrong button and they throw you anyways. Again, a little nitpicky, but that is a big difference between these fighting games. When it comes to customization, Street Fighter 6 introduced Create a Fighter, allowing you to fully in-depth create your own character 
or however you see fit. You can go totally normal like this. You can make Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or you can go a little bit crazy like this guy or this guy. Now you can't actually use your avatars like that online, but you can use them in avatar battles like this. And though it is online, it's a very specific game mode for you to actually use your avatars. Other than that, characters do have other outfits like Luke, we have outfit three here, Jamie outfit three. As of right now, the characters have three different outfits and those outfits have 10 different colors. So there is pretty good customization there, but it can be limited, I guess, to a point. Cosmetically, Mortal Kombat 1 does not have Creative Fighter, but they do have really good customization per character. Meaning we have our palettes. We have three different costumes for our character, which you could argue very much like Street Fighter 6 also has three outfits as of right now, but you can see we have empty slots here for Mortal Kombat. They're gonna have more just like Street Fighter will. And these color palettes are of course, different colors per those outfits. So customization on the surface right there seems pretty similar. And then of course, every character has a single gear piece you can customize. So not only do you customize the outfit, the color of that outfit, but now you can customize the actual gear piece of themselves. Now, some gear pieces do seem a little bit more prominent, like Scorpion's here is on the face. So you're more likely to actually notice the difference of the gear piece, even in battle. But some gear pieces like Shang Tsung's Wolverine Claws, though there is a slight noticeable difference in some of them, they're not too noticeable in an actual fight. Let me know down below. Do you think Mortal Kombat 1 should have more customizable gear pieces per character? Or is one enough? Let me know your thoughts down below. Now, when it comes to online features, Street Fighter 6 has the battle hub, which we were just in, where you can choose a server like Asia, North America, South America, Europe, and just choose a lobby there and tell your friends to hit you up in that lobby. You have ranked matches, casual matches, custom rooms, where you can create a room ID and tell your friends to join that room ID. Now for Mortal Kombat 1's online features, as of this recording, it's a bit different than when you might see this video, because as of right now, there actually is no cross play for Mortal Kombat 1, though we're getting it soon. And again, by the time you're watching this, it probably already has it, but we of course have our casual matches versus King of the Hill. We have private matches for our friends and King of the Hill. And of course, we're gonna get practice mode online coming soon. And Mortal Kombat 1's prominent ranked mode combat league is gonna have seasons where you can earn skins, cosmetics, cards, badges, stuff like that. And they have different rank rewards. So think about this, like, you know, iron, bronze, silver, gold, diamond, platinum, master, whatever, but they have different words for it, champion, master, grandmaster, and so on. And then once the season ends, you do go back down to apprentice and you gotta work your way back up. A bit of a different grind per se compared to Street Fighter 6's ranked matches online and how they do their stuff. But for Mortal Kombat, your prominent ones are gonna be combat league, casual, and of course, private matches. Mortal Kombat has fatalities and brutalities, really crazy ways to end the game and the match, which of course is what Mortal Kombat is known for, where Street Fighter 6 doesn't really have that. They more or less have just an ending screen animation, which can be preferred by some fighters, just like this. Street Fighter 6 has character animation, winning screens when they win the fight, whereas Mortal Kombat is of course known for their fatalities, their brutalities, really crazy ways to end the fight, which really make Mortal Kombat stand out, and it's how they stood out for decades now. You can of course do brutality to make it really flashy. No. No. Ah. I am the calm before the storm. Brutality. Raiden wins. Or you can do a classic fatality. If you want to have a little bit of extra fun, Street Fighter 6 does have a really cool game mode called Extreme Battles that you can do online in the Battle Hub or of course locally where you have different roles and different gimmicks where right here we have rules and regulations where the point of the fight is not to win with health but be the first to perform the specified actions. And at the same time, we can also add a gimmick where we can add mecha friends to just turn into the fight and really mix it up. So like I said before, you don't actually have health. We have kind of specified actions we have to do. There's our mecha friend. What's he going to do here? We'll hit him and then it'll cause a shock and give us a combo do it again really ruin the fight there we gotta throw one time so let's throw there's our action jumping attack okay we'll jump in attack there's one 
Here's two. Extreme battle is just made for some fun differences when you're not really in the mood to go super hard on just fighting. And though Street Fighter VI has extreme battles to help mix things up, Mortal Kombat 1 has invasions, which is a really cool new game mode where you can progress through different mesas. You can explore the worlds of the mesas, have different fights like this one here is endurance where you fight three enemies. You can build your duo here, your character and your camera. You can actually give your main character stats like health, attack, special defense, agility that of course affect your stats in fights. We also have relics and resistances to different stuff like acid, blood, chaos hits. You can add talismans that do different things, give you different abilities or effects. Relics also give you different abilities or effects. You can find secret doors, secret chests to unlock different things. This is kind of Mortal Kombat 1's version of Extreme Battles because a lot of the fights have modifiers on them that can either be really annoying or really cool. Once you defeat them all or on your free time, you can actually challenge the seasonal tower. As you go through the maces, you're gonna go to a final boss battle. Again, really challenging, but you get also some rewards for it. A really cool new game mode to help you have some fun outside of your standard fights. Though it has some controversy within the community, I love invasions and I think it's only going to get better with time. Though games are both amazing fighting games and amazing games in general, they offer very different experiences that some might enjoy more than the other, both with their characters, their gameplay style, the character archetypes, and overall feel of the game. I personally enjoy both so much, but I do understand why somebody might enjoy, you know, Street Fighter 6 over Mortal combat one or the other way around though i will say from my personal experience if you enjoy one i would recommend checking the other one out they're just so much fun in their own way and it gives you just something else to play when you're not in the mood for that specific game but that's just my own thoughts let me know your thoughts down below what do you think of the differences between street fighter 6 and mortal kombat 1 and which one do you like better and why again let me know your thoughts down below subscribe here for more of the best fighting game content i'll see you in the next one until then take it one step at a time